you are so clement. Good morning, brethren. Good morning. Fellowship is a term, I think, I can safely say that all of us are familiar with. It's an activity we look forward to. But how important is it? Do we need it to fellowship? Or can one get along fine without it? Is it merely a religious word or activity as I once thought? Or can anyone fellowship besides religion? According to Strong's Concordance, page 28-42, one of the words used for fellowship in Greek is K-O-I-N-O-N-I-N. -I, -N -O -N -I, -N. I don't know how to pronounce it. <laughs> it means a close association of persons emphasizing what is common among them or between them by extension participation sharing contribution gift the outcome of such close relationship fellowship communion communication contribution distribution. So if that is a true description of fellowship, then it means that anyone can and do engage in this activity. Such as families, friends, etc. But what about us, brethren, what about us? What does fellowship mean for the called out ones? Unlike the world and its views, our interaction with each other has a much more significant and serious meaning. In fact, it has eternal consequences. For the type of fellowship that we are called upon to have must be purpose, purposeful and quality, which is the title of my message today, The Importance of Quality Fellowship. For as in everything in our world, there is good and there is evil. A right way to do something and a wrong way. And fellowship is no different. As we are admonished in Ephesians 5 verses 11, that we should have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather to, my King James says, expose them. But in imagine it says reprove. And that in Greek is, uh, spell it out again, E L E N C H O. Elencho, which means to rebuke, convict, show or tell fault. In other words, show or tell what is wrong with something or act. In verses 3 and 5 of Ephesians 5, it expresses the many obvious acts of darkness that we are told to avoid and abstain from. 
But what about the not so obvious and subtle ones of our modern times? Such as what is portrayed on the screens of television, the computers, the cinemas. Those things which promotes murder, violence, and sexual immorality, witchcraft. Also, it is in the music and songs that expresses the same. Subtle, I think. For some of them can seem so pretty harmless, nice sounding and appealing that we could sometimes find ourselves singing them without considering the words. But could one be guilty of having fellowship with the fruit of darkness, the unfruitful work of darkness, by spending time and money to be entertained by these things? A scripture in Isaiah 33, 15 seems to suggest that. In 1 Thessalonians 5, 22, we are told to abstain from every form of evil. The Greek word for form is E-I-D-O, which means sight, fashion, shape. That is, if it looks like evil, sounds like it, most likely it is, and we should abstain from it. So in regards to how we should live, redeeming the times, as members of the body of Christ, let's read Hebrews 10, 24, 25. And it says, And let us consider one another in order to stir up love and good works, not forsaking the assemblies of ourselves together, as is the manner of some, but exhorting one another, and so much more as you see the day approaching. Now, I had mentioned before the value of our fellowship. How crucial and important and significant it is and that it has eternal consequences. Now, this is the reason. First John 1 and verses 2 to 3. The life was manifested and we have seen and bear witness and declare to you that eternal life which was with the Father and was manifested to us. That which, was, that which we have seen and heard, we declare to you that you also may have fellowship with us. And truly, our fellowship is with the Father and His Son. These words show us the crucial role that true fellowship plays in our lives. How significantly important it is for 
if we do not make the effort to have this type of fellowship with the Father and His Son, how can we hope to have a future life with them and each other? How can the statement, we are family, have any meaning if we refuse or neglect to spend time with our family? Let's see another scripture that shows this significance. Malachi 3.16 Then those who fear the Lord spoke to one another, and the Lord listened and heard them. So a book of remembrance were written for those before him, for those who feared the Lord and who meditated on his name. They shall be mine, says the Lord of hosts, on the day that I make them my jewels, and I will spare them as a father spares his own son who serves him. Notice that the Almighty pays particular attention to those who have and enjoy such an activity with those interaction with each other as his people, especially when its focus is out of reverence for him and his name. So that whatever is done can be pleasing to him when one's mind is stayed on him. So that we can exalt him among ourselves. So very important is this kind or type of activity that a book of remembrance is written for on behalf of those who are involved in it. This type of interaction and communication with each other. So, brethren, how important is fellowship? It's very important, especially when it is of the kind that has the Heavenly Father's approval. And we see it's not just about socializing, liming, hanging out, or even building bonds. Hebrews 10, 25 to 20, 24 to 25 makes it clear as to some of the major reasons why we make the effort to assemble and spend time with each other regularly, and more so as we see the urgency of the times. So, brethren, let's make the effort to be involved in true quality fellowship, that we may also be included among those for whom the Book of Remembrance is written, and to be the special treasures of our Heavenly Father for all eternity. Thank you.